Good morning, everyone. This is Ahlam Al Amri from the General Directorate of Infection Prevention and Control of Healthcare Facilities at Ministry of Health. And today we'll give you a session about dietary services department and the methods of evaluating or auditing this department. Dietary services department, or uh, it's belong to the uh, domain E, and particularly in element E.2. Uh, and it consists of 16 sub-elements. And the activities required for auditing um, this uh, element, it's um, uh, through the document review, uh, D, uh, SI, staff interview, O, observation, and uh, MR for medical record. And it can be uh, scored um, from zero for uh, not uh, met um, sub-elements and one for partially met element, sub-element, and two for fully met sub-elements, and NA for not applicable sub-elements. Sub-element E 2.1, uh, it states that there is a written policy and procedure addressing dietary services and kitchen staff um, hygiene. And this uh, sub-element is required uh, activity of uh, um, document review uh, for scoring or evaluating uh, this sub-element. So reviewing um, the document required, we have to review the policy um, that constructed for the infection control program in this particular services, which is the dietary services. And it should be uh, comprehensive and well descriptive and, and covers all aspects of infection uh, prevention and control practices in the dietary unit. Uh, it, it can be including, uh, but not limited to, the infection control or infection prevention and control practices in this area. So uh, we will see the aspects covered in this policy in regard to the title of the hand hygiene, um, the, the whole aspects of the hand hygiene or, or the, the procedure of the hand hygiene from the moments to the techniques and the time of the hand hygiene required to performing uh, the hand uh, sanitization. And also the, the personal hygiene practices required that to be implemented among the dietary services staff and also the required uh, or recommended uh, personal protective equipment such as um, gloves, hair covers, and mask and plastic apron to be used uh, to maintain uh, the clean attire or, or required attire for this particular healthcare workers during the food preparation and handling. Also, another aspect that must be uh, stated in the same policy that we are reviewing for evaluating the sub-elements, that it should be include the pre-employment screening and assessment and periodic evaluation for the dietary um, uh, services healthcare workers. It uh, so, so, so should be required for the food handler and other supporting staff in the dietary unit, which include and uh, not limited to the clinical examination investigation, such as just X-ray, blood and stool analysis, and vaccination, which is required based on the uh, fiction control uh, recommended vaccination for this particular um, healthcare workers. And the biannually and after returning from the long vacations, it must be um, uh, doing um, uh, periodic evaluation for this particular category. And also it should be stated as an aspect in the same policy, the work restriction, uh, both the examination and evaluation. So some healthcare workers in the same services, um, they have um, out of range um, or, um, or abnormal uh, result of the investigation, or um, so they have or, or specific signs and symptoms for a particular disease, they have to be restricted from working in this high risk area. And the components of the dietary uh, unit also um, uh, for the structure uh, designing of this particular area, it must be also uh, stated in the same policy when we are reviewing the document, uh, such as in the title of component of diet unit. So it's supposed to be um, uh, structured uh, or, or divided to the receiving area, storage area, preparation and display and transporting and serving uh, area. And also we have to uh, include the equipments required for for, um, for using or implementing the infection control um, uh, measures in this area and also the, the, the utensils and equipment required for the preparation and serving of the uh, dietary meals, such as the separate for different food um, staff and, um, and also we have to have um, a specific um, uh, cutting uh, blade uh, that uh, different from the, for, for the vegetables different than that those for the meat. And the same policy in the dietary services uh, must be uh, based on scientific approved re references uh, that is uh, always recommended when you are implementing the infection control program or measures in any uh, uh, clinical department, such as the MOH guidelines, GCC, CDC, 
W H O and EPIC references, and it must be uh, assigned from the authorized personnel and approved by the IBC committee. So the same policy must be discussed in the IBC uh, committee, a regular committee, and must be approved from the all members uh, who are the uh, permanent members of the Infection Prevention and Control Committee. And the same policy, it will be um, valid um, uh, within two to three years and must be updated later on. Or when we have any uh, new updates or, or, or disseminated guideline uh, or regulations that we have to follow, we at, at that time we need to update our uh, documents or update our policy. Sub-element E.2.2 uh, uh, state that adequate numbers of hand washing facilities or hand drop antiseptic devices are available. And this uh, sub-element, it must be evaluated through observation and staff interview. So uh, for the same uh, sub-element, we need to observe the kitchen um, uh, or the dietary services healthcare workers for their hand washing or hand rubbing. Um, supposed to be uh, for the hand rubbing, the duration uh, from two, 20 to 30 seconds, and for the hand washing, uh, the 40 to 60 seconds. And the technique also, we have to observe the, the sequence of the hand rubbing and hand washing, which is the same, and the moments of the hand hygiene for the healthcare workers in the dietary services, which is before starting work, after using the toilet, after touching their ears, nose, mouth, or hair, and after handling raw, foods, uh, raw food and also um, it uh, visibly soiled. And another moment that uh, must be considered when, uh, when we have to perform the hand hygiene um, uh, if it can be um, through the hand washing or hand rubbing, uh, uh, such as before moving from the raw food uh, preparation area to the cooked food preparation area and after handling food or food waste, before and after any cleaning procedures, before and after eating, drinking, or smoking, after handling soiled articles or trash, and after removing the BBE, such as gloves. We have also to observe the, the appropriate use uh, of the personal protective equipment based on the task performed and also the method of dunning and duffing for the same uh, healthcare workers in the same surface. Uh, in the staff interview uh, method for evaluating this sub-element, we need to ask the healthcare workers in the dietary services about the technique for the hand washing and hand rubbing, uh, such as uh, the times and the, the moments and also uh, how to perform uh, the techniques for performing these um, activities. And also we can ask them uh, about the uh, indication for using the BBE, uh, the types of BBE required in this area and the technique for sequence and uh, of dunning and doffing of BBE. Sub-element E.2.3 state that um, kitchen staff practice hand hygiene properly and use a suitable PPE while handling food. And this sub-element required uh, methods for document review, medical record, and staff interview for evaluating uh, this statement. So the document required for reviewing uh, for this sub-element um, can, can be through checking the work restriction policy that we mentioned earlier in the first slide. And uh, it's supposed to be outlined the above mentioned infection or conditions such as in the respiratory infections cases or gastroenteritis cases when the staff are complaining of um, diarrhea and vomiting and uh, any uh, hand or skin infections or wounds, what the type of work restriction required and stated already in the policy. And also we have to review the form such as the consent form with a signature of dietary staff and, and kitchen personnel uh, uh, and it's supposed to be in a multilingual um, such as in Arabic, English or other language that's suitable for, uh, for um, implementation in the same area and suitable uh, uh, for based on the needs of the healthcare workers for preferred language uh, to implement the particular policy. Also, we can review uh, um, that uh, the, the application of the work restriction policy, uh, such as the, the medical sickness reports in the same policy, and, uh, uh, and supposed to be uh, mentioned that uh, fulfilled during the third, three to six, last three to six months for kitchen uh, personnel who were suffering from any of above, above mentioned infectious or conditions. So if we found that um, they have already reported some uh, healthcare workers in the same services complaining of specific uh, infectious disease that already uh, stated in the policy, we have to review um, the report that released for them and the, or the implementation of the work restriction required for these particular uh, staff. And also we have to review and um, the evaluation of their infections or conditions in the employees' clinic uh, through um, uh, reviewing their uh, medical record.
and also we can review their investigation and treatment reports in the same medical record for particular staff. So we can see um, uh, the report for, uh, for identification of a specific staff in the last three to six months. And if we found that any staff complaining of uh, any mentioned infectious uh, disease that reported in the policy uh, that must be um, uh, uh, reported or notified from the healthcare workers and the dietary services to provide them um, a work restriction. So based on that, we'll take the fine number for the, the particular staff that we, we reported already in the document and ask them to uh, supply you with that medical record to uh, review all the required forms um, for this particular policy. In the same um, uh, policy, on the same sub-element, we'll do staff interview with the uh, dietary services staff uh, to ask them about the, the implementation uh, or, or their understanding of the work restriction uh, policy and procedure. Sub-element E.2.4 state that kitchen staff with respiratory infections, gastroenteritis, diarrhea, or hand infections are restricted from handling food. And this sub-element required medical record and staff interview for evaluation. So we have to review the following documents um, uh, to find out if the, um, this statement is implemented uh, in the dietary services. Uh, so we can review the medical records that demonstrate a proper application of this sub-element, such as checking for the presence of open hiring results of stool tests and cultures and updated results every six months and after returning from the long vacation for the dietary staff. And also, the above mentioned uh, results are reviewed by, and signed by the employee health clinic, as well as the um, infection prevention and control um, uh, department. Uh, and there is the evidence of viewing the medical records and promoting accountability. Sub-element E.2.5 state that medical evaluation is performed routinely, often hiring every six months and after returning from the long vacation. And the results are reviewed by the employee health clinic and infection prevention and control uh, department team. Uh, and this um, method required for, uh, for evaluating this uh, sub-element, it required the reviewing of medical record. For the staff interview, uh, we can ask um, uh, three to five of the kitchen staff about the frequency of stool tests and cultures for them and the last investigation that have been offered to them. And instead of direct question, we can give them uh, indirect scenarios uh, to obtain their answers and based on, uh, based on their answers, we can score the sub-element. And also we can review the files of, um, of the employees who came from the long vacation lastly to, to see uh, whether protocols and this policy uh, properly applied or not. And also we can pick or memorize names of three to five personnel during the, the visit and ask for their medical records to find out if this policy um, implemented or not. Sub-element E.2.6 state that all kitchen staff receive uh, vaccines against hepatitis A, typhoid, meningococcal meningitis, and influenza vaccine. So we can review the, the following docu documents to find out the implementation of this uh, sub-element. Uh, we can review the medical record that demonstrates the proper applica um, application of this sub-element through checking the presence of updated certificate of vaccination, such as hepatitis A every year, his typhoid vaccination every five years, meningitis vaccination every five years. And also we can pick and memorize names of three to five uh, healthcare workers in the same department during our visit and ask for their medical re report uh, and records uh, to find out if this uh, policy are implemented or not. Sub-element E.2.7 state that kitchen is designed as a physically separated uh, areas with uh, specified equipment and supplies such as uh, uh, mixture joists, boards, plates, knives for a different type of food. And boards, plates, and knives used to cut meat, um, uh, poultry, fish, or vegetables are identifiable um, uh, separated such as in color coded and immediately washed after use. And this uh, sub-element um, required a specific um, methods for evaluating it through the observation and staff interview. So we have to observe the, the kitchen area uh, and design uh, that to ensure that the meat cutting area um, is uh, it should be separated from other cutting areas uh, such as in vegetables and salad with specified equipment and supplies for both areas different than each other. And cutting boards and knife should be color coded uh, to um, to avoid any uh, misleading um, uh, or, or error in preparing uh, for using the same utensils. 
and the sewing machines can be same, um, uh, but proper cleaning is required uh, before processing the different types of meat. And also for the food cooking preparation area, process area and packaging area, are all these activities can be grouped together without physical separation. We have to put in our consideration that if we have any cutting boards or utensils that damaged or with cracks or deep cuts cannot be cleaned and disinfected properly, it must be discarded and it should not be used. And wooden cutting boards are not accepted and prohibited in the kitchen services area. Also, uh, for evaluating this sub-element, we need the staff interview. So we have to ask the kitchen supervisor and kitchen personnel about um, the boards and plates and knife that they are used for cutting meats and uh, fish or vegetables and, um, and how they are identifying each of them based on their different colors. And also we can ask them about what is the schedule of washing boards and knife and how are boards, plates and knife being washed. And the answer must be um, all, always um, uh, should be uh, as the following, immediately after use in the working area or dumped to be washed later on the dishwasher. And it should be not accepted that to leave them for a day or to the end of the shift. Uh, and also we have to um, uh, consider that instead of direct question, we have to always use a scenarios to obtain the answers and based on their answer, we can evaluate the sub-elements and score it. Sub-element E.2.8, uh, uh, that temperature requirements and protection from contamination are considered during receiving storage preparation, display and transportation of food. Freezer and fridge temperatures are continuously monitored and documented on a log sheets and relevant actions are taken based on these uh, monitored temperature or, or, um, or uh, parameters. And this sub-element required a specific activities such as document review, observation, and staff interview. So we have to review a specific document to obtain the answer for this um, sub-element, uh, such as the temperature logs and records of the last month that should be maintained at all given areas, such as temperature checks, uh, supposed to be done at least twice a day. And temperature requirements is supposed to be ranged from uh, 10 to 21 degrees centigrade in the dry storage. And the low temperature storage maintenance is supposed to be uh, divided to the fruit and vegetables from 4 to 7 degrees centigrade. Dairy products uh, supposed to be from 0 to 4 degrees centigrade and frozen food from minus 18 to minus 23rd um, degrees centigrade. We have also to review the document for the plant preventive maintenance or PPM and the quality check for the freezer, refrigerator and transport trolley if applicable and temperature display monitors. And if there is any outrange uh, parameters, we have to uh, um, check what the management or, or, or the intervention is taking to avoid or to uh, solve the situation. And the intervention records for the uh, typical uh, temperatures and failure situation must be documented and must be reviewed by the auditor. The observation um, method for evaluating the sub-element required to uh, observe that the display of the temperature monitors or thermometers at all given areas. And also we can um, see uh, and observe the valid BBM stickers on the refrigerator, freezer, and transport trolley if applicable. And uh, from these um, observation, uh, we can uh, score the, um, the sub-element of the uh, specific statement. Staff interview um, method for this sub-element required to ask the uh, uh, kitchen supervisor and kitchen personnel about the optimal temperatures required uh, uh, during receiving storage and preparation or display uh, uh, and transportation of uh, food and who are responsible um, uh, for rec recording the temperatures at different areas and in malfunctioning or failure situation, what are the approved protocols required or steps required to take in, in such cases. Uh, and all from these answers, uh, we can um, evaluate the, uh, the sub-element for this uh, particular method. Sub-element E.2.9 state that water use for cooking is supplied by commercially approved com companies or hospital water that is tested at least monthly to ensure that its quality meets regulatory standard for, for portable water. And this sub-element required document and staff interview for evaluation. So for evaluating the sub-element, we need the document review uh, and uh, reviewing a specific document such as the water testing result of in the last six months. The microbiological and chemical testing of water that should be meet the, re the regulatory standards required for this particular uh, statement. And also we have to review the records for maintenance and intervention required as a per hospital policy if the water testing result does not match with the uh, required parameters. And also we have to review the contract with the commercially approved company that's supplying for the water 
uh, in this uh, services. The another method is the, through the staff interview. So we have to ask the kitchen supervisor and kitchen personnel uh, specific questions such as who will be responsible for collecting water sample, how water samples are collected, and what are the sites used for collections, and what are the containers or types used to send water samples. And if the kitchen is using a ready-made water for cooking, you should ask about the supply chain and stock, and stock of the such water uh, after reviewing the contract. Sub-element E.2.10 state that food containers are properly labeled with expiry date and expiry dates of food stuff are checked before use. And this sub-element is evaluated through observation and staff interview. So we have to observe uh, the, the store um, to check that all food containers are properly labeled with the expiry date. And uh, we have to see that all supplies of same kind are stuck together. For example, stock of salt, tea, jam, that have the same lot numbers and expiry dates. And also we can check that uh, the expiry date of all products are clearly noted with labeling of near to expiry foods in different colors. So stock of near to expiry foods are clearly labeled. And also we have to observe the dispatch rules or shelves rules first expiry first in first out, which is the FIFO um, uh, protocol. We have also to ask an uh, interview with the kitchen supervisor and kitchen healthcare workers about the rules of storing, storing of new stock, uh, organizing shelves and dispatching that are um, applied in the same area. And also we can interview with them about the labeling food containers while maintaining expiry date, labeling of near to expiry food in different colors and checking the expiry dates depending on the hospital policy. Sub-element E.2.11 state that fruit and vegetables are watched and properly disinfected, and this sub-element is evaluated through observation and staff interview. So the observation in this uh, for evaluating this sub-element required to observe the vegetables and fruit washing or cleaning and disinfection area. So it's preferred that to be separate area, and it's uh, optimal or optional to be associated with the veg um, uh, vegetables and salad cutting area. And it's preferred to be equipped with the two dedicated deep stainless steel uh, sink, one for washing and the second for disinfection. And also we have to, um, uh, to uh, observe the material safety data sheet for relevant uh, chemical and disinfectants that used for disinfection of this uh, food. And through the observation, we can make a staff interview to, um, to uh, obtain an answers and score the specific sub-element. And usually we have to consider that one deep container is also acceptable in absence of double sink used for vegetables and fruit immersion for disinfection. Sub-element E.2.12 state that food containers and cooking utensils are washed immediately after being empty. And, and this sub-element required uh, two methods for evaluation, observation, and staff interview. So we have to observe that uh, in the food services area uh, uh, that the containers and cooking utensils are washed after use. And the food containers and cook the cooking utensils should be washed immediately after use in the same working area or dump to be washed later on the dishwasher. And it's not acceptable to leave them for the day to the end of the shift, such as in the morning, or evening, or afternoon shift. We have to interview with the staff and ask them about what is the schedule for washing food containers and cooking utensils, how are food containers and cooking utensils being washed, and, uh, and we have also to um, consider that, not ask them a direct question, instead we have to give them a scenario related to this uh, questions, and based on their answers, we will score the sub-element. Sub-element E.2.13 state that there is an insect and rodent control plan that is strictly implemented in the dietary services area. And this sub-element required document review, observation, and staff interview. So we have to um, review the documents such as the policy, the plan, uh, and the protocol for the insect and rodent uh, uh, program. And also we have to check the contract with the commercially approved company. And also we have to um, check uh, which chemicals and pesticides are used uh, and check their uh, material safety data sheet of these uh, uh, materials used for the uh, control or protocol for the insects and, uh, um, and uh, rodent uh, control. We have to consider that the written protocol for spraying chemical and pesticides must be um, 
uh, reviewed and also the checklist for the routine inspection and monitoring of incoming deliveries uh, and uh, company uh, for the stall, uh, for the stores uh, for to um, avoid any infestation and uh, also we can review the checklist for routine inspection of kitchens for the uh, roaches, uh, roaches and the rodent or, or, or their traces. We have to observe the area of the kitchen to ensure that the insect and rodent control are properly implemented. Uh, through the approved and safe chemical and pesticides are available for use uh, based on the hospital uh, policy and based on the approved checklist for these uh, materials. The devices for insect and rodent control are available and also we can uh, observe the windows that open to the outside have screens that are kept in good repair and all areas are kept clean, sanitized and in a good repair and also we can observe all openings and defects with risk of the infestations are sealed uh, to evaluate uh, the sub-element um, and uh, put your score based on that observation. The staff interview method for this sub-element required to ask them, uh, the kitchen supervisor and kitchen staff about the insect and rodent control plan and uh, protocol for spraying chemical and pesticide also required uh, precautions to be taken before, during and after spraying chemicals and pesticides and also the routine inspection of incoming deliveries for infestation and regular monitoring of dry products in the storage area. And their knowledge um, and their answers should be compatible with the hospital policy and protocol and based on that you will put your score for this sub-element. Sub-element E.2.14 state that the kitchen environment is clean, frequently clean, dry and dust free. And this sub-element requires document observation and staff interview methods. So we have to review the documents that related to the kitchen housekeeping schedule and with the clear rules and responsibilities of housekeeping and kitchen staff. And also the kitchen housekeeping checklist and check whether they apply the processes are compatible with their approved policy or not. And also we can ask uh, and, uh, and, uh, and review the material safety data sheet that used um, a specific materials for uh, implementing the housekeeping or environmental cleaning and disinfection in this area. So also we can observe the ongoing housekeeping activities such as the, um, the, the process that are compatible with the policy that we reviewed or not. So we can observe the responsible staff or uh, such as in the housekeeping staff and how they are using the PPE and um, uh, the applied housekeeping schedule so we can observe if the housekeeping following the same timing that already um, mentioned in the schedule and uh, we can observe the applied procedure. And also we can observe the consumed supply and the cleaning ingredients and disinfectants, mops and wipes, spray and bottles, and it's compatible or not with the approved policy. So uh, we can also visit the janitor's uh, rooms to check the availability and specification of the housekeeping supplies. And also we can um, uh, check the uh, quality of housekeeping activities and processes that implemented in the same area, uh, such as the spaces under the cooking ranges, corners and hidden area, is it clean or not, the sinks and area under them, storage area and shelves, fridges and refrigerators. And based that, we can um, observe uh, the defective in the housekeeping activities. We can also interview the kitchen staff and housekeeping staff about the, uh, uh, and ask them about the process of cleaning and disinfection in the kitchen environment. And, uh, and we can interview uh, with them regarding the rules and responsibility and if it is compatible with the review document or not. And we can uh, interview with them and ask them about the applied procedure and also about the applied schedule for the cleaning and disinfection of the uh, dietary services environment. Sub Element E.2.15 state that storage shelf dimensions are at least 40 centimeters from the ceiling, 20 centimeters from the floor, and 5 centimeters from the wall. And this sub element evaluated through observation. So we can go directly to the storage area and check the dimensions. And we'll see there it's a specific um, or, or, or um, uh, estimated uh, uh, dimensions. Uh, uh, based on this statement and based on our observation, we'll evaluate this and score this sub-element. Sub-element E.2.16 uh, state that food carts in use are dedicated for hot and cold meals. And this sub-element is um, evaluated through document, observation, and staff interview. So we can um, review the document or checklist for monitoring the uh, temperature for these uh, cards to uh, score this sub-element through the document. Observation, we can observe the monitors 
uh, for that um, uh, containers or for that uh, trolleys uh, or carts and based on that we will give the score and also the staff interview by interviewing with the uh, staff in the dietary services or supervisor in dietary services regarding this sub element and based on their answers we will score this sub element uh, accordingly. Thank you so much for listening to this session and I hope you gain something from this uh, lecture. And if you have any further inquiries or questions, kindly do not hesitate to contact us through the GDIBC uh, um, uh, emails uh, or through the auditing uh, programs email, or you can directly contact us through the phone call or the WhatsApp uh, to our colleagues in the auditing program uh, coordinator at GDIBC, or you can directly contact your regional ICA coordinator um, and I hope you gain uh, something from this, this session and we'll see inshallah your achievement as um, a competent auditor in the future. Thank you so much.